Hello, and welcome to the seventh Revolutionary Minute. This series from Quincy Historical Society, Quincy 400, and QATV honors the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution, recognizing events both significant and obscure here in Quincy, Massachusetts, and beyond. 250 years ago, on this date, March 11, 1774, the town of Braintree, of which the present-day city of Quincy was the North Precinct, received and passed in town meeting a resolution on the ongoing crisis engendered by the Tea Act. Numerous Massachusetts towns were framing similar resolutions in these weeks following the Boston Tea Party. Braintree had placed the resolution on the agenda at its first town meeting session of the year on January 10th. We should point out that at this time, John Adams was a resident of Boston, not Braintree, and thus did not participate. At the January 10th meeting, the town appointed a committee of 15 to prepare a resolution and report back. Colonel Josiah Quincy served as chair, and other members included Joseph Palmer and Norton Quincy. The town debated the resolution at a January 24th meeting. A first draft was withdrawn, and a second one may have been as well, before arriving at the resolution adopted on March 11th. The resolution thus is a consensus document, and it's interesting to see how far its authors were willing to go and where they appear to have held back. The document justifies resistance to the Tea Act with the arguments used by most patriots. It relies on notions of the common good, liberty, and representation to conclude, no British law can be justly binding on us. As historian Gordon Wood has argued about the revolution, traditional premises lead to radical conclusions. So too, the resolution relies on traditional concepts of greed and corruption to argue that British abuse of power, if accepted at all, will become all-devouring. The resolution takes a stand on what was the current hot issue of the day. The town resolves to engage in what we'd call a boycott of the purchase, selling, or use of East India Company tea, and to regard people who break the boycott as enemies to our rights and liberties. But by specifying East India Company tea, the town chooses not to expand the boycott to all tea, including smuggled tea, a position advocated by most of the fervent patriots. In declaring its resolve to defy the Tax Act, the town is also at pains to assure that it will obey the province's law and not use liberty as a cloak for licentiousness. And in urging cooperation among the colonies for recovering and defending their rights, it specifies in every lawful, just, and constitutional measure. Perhaps most interesting, the resolution makes no mention of the Boston Tea Party. The Tea Party was vivid in everyone's memory. There had even been a mini Tea Party four days before the meeting where the resolution was passed. Disguised Bostonians destroyed the cargo of tea in a ship that had just arrived. And towns across Massachusetts were passing resolutions, in most cases in support of the Tea Party, but in some cases critical of it. Braintree's silence must have been deliberate. The resolution concludes with the hope that happiness and tranquility between the colonies and Britain would be restored on an equitable basis. Patriots would stick with this kind of formulation for an amazingly long time. And the tensions between boldness, qualification, and ambivalence evident in this resolution would continue to play out across 1774 in what historian Mary Beth Norton has called the long year of revolution. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll join us for the next Revolutionary Minute.